Hello, welcome to the barbecue shop here at Hayes Garden World. Today we're joined by top barbecue chef Richard Holden and we're going to talk about our new, one of our new favourite barbecues that's come to the country this year, uh, the Traeger Wood-Fired Grill. We've been playing with these all summer, we've really enjoyed them. Um, Richard's just been out to the States to work with the guys out yeah. in, uh, at Traeger. So um, I'm going to hand over to you, you know a lot more about these barbecues and how they work for me. So over to you. Well, you've used them as well, but we'll yeah. have a quick chat through them. Um, so these are different to your normal barbecues. They're not gas, they're not charcoal. They're using wood pellets. Um, and it looks on the outside like a traditional offset, but rather than having a wood, uh, rather than having your firebox down here, you've actually got a hopper uh, with these little wood pellets in. So these, these are virgin wood. They come in uh, different flavors, just like your, any of your other smoking products. So you can get them in um, apple, cherry, hickory, mesquite, beech. Um, and they just go in the side here and what you've got at the bottom of this, um, of this hopper is a corkscrew auger that takes yeah. the pellets through to the bottom of the, the chamber which we'll show in a moment. So that, that's your hopper. If you want to change uh, woods from one cook to the next, some of the models have a little trap door on the back. Yeah. You just open that, make sure you've got a bucket underneath before you open <laughs> it as I found out. But um, make sure you've got that under there and then you can, just, you can empty about 95% of the chips out, of the, um, of the pellets out, sorry, and then um, and then you just put your new flavor in, but uh, lots of different flavors. So really simple to operate, large access on the front. So we've just had it lit. That's why there's a little bit of smoke coming out. Um, they do plug in, yeah. but they're not electric heated or powered. Um, the, the electric just powers, uh, just kind of gives uh, control to the onboard con uh, computer unit. So if we look down here at the main control panel, we've got an on, on and off switch. So we turn that on, but nothing happens. We need to turn the dial from the shutdown cycle into one of the cooking temperature settings. So just like an oven, basically, you, so you set and control the temperature by the dial on the front. So let's say we're gonna go for a roast. I'm gonna go around to 190 degrees. We've got 190 flashing on the display. Um, what's gonna happen now, we can see that we've got a little bit of air movement coming out of the, uh, the bottom of the chamber there. What's happening now is the onboard computer, we've got an air fan pushing air through to the bottom of the fire pot, into the bottom of the barbecue. Um, and we've got this corkscrew auger that's taking the pellets along into the bottom of the, uh, into the, bottom of the chamber. So if you want to come and have a close up on this, uh, down in the very bottom, in the center of the barbecue, we've got this little fire pot. There's a heat element in here, just like in the top of an oven where you've got the grill. That's going to glow red. So you've got heat, you've got an air fan, you've got a fan blowing air in, um, just kind of fanning the flames, basically. Yeah. The, um, the pellets are dropping into the pot, everything's catching. So what will, what will happen is the onboard computer, um, there's a thermostat built into the side of the uh, chamber on the left-hand side, which talks back to the computer. When the internal uh, temperature gets within target range, it goes slightly above, about seven degrees above target temperature, the onboard computer stops calling for pellets. So the auger switches off. The chamber sits there, kind of moderates, depending on the temperature of the day. Um, you've, got, um, you've got the heat built up within the barbecue. It will sit there until it drops about seven degrees below target temperature. Then the auger system will be kicked back in again because the computer will start calling for more pellets. So as far as managing a fire on a gas or a charcoal barbecue, it's re this, is, this is just foolproof because you control the temperature using the dial on the front. I don't know if you want to come back in a second and see how it's going now. It's been yeah. on for a few more minutes. You can see the difference. So when it's firing up and when it's, when it's uh, burning like that, you'll get an initial puff of smoke when yeah. the pellets drop in. And then especially on a high temperature because you've got, you've got a good amount of pellets going in there and you've got a good fan as well. Um, so it's going to burn quite clean. It's going to burn quite hot. Talking of quite hot, uh, we're gonna, we need to talk about how we distribute this heat yeah. around the, the cookbox now. So the first thing to go in is this, um, this little baffle here. Now this sits front ways and back ways so that the heat has to come out left and right. Yeah. So we put this in, this sits directly over the, uh, the fire pot like so. So now we've got heat coming left and right, but we still need to distribute that heat a little bit better around the chamber. So the next thing we have is, um, is this little guy here. Now one of the top tips with this is, when it comes in the, in the box, it hasn't got a tin foil on it. Now what we've found, as I've used them, as you've used them, is yeah. covering it with tin foil saves you a lot of hassle when having to clean it, because all your fat will drip on there. Take that off, change it every two or three barbecues. It's a really, saves you a lot of hassle. So as you mentioned, this is kind of a, a fat tray and a, yeah. and a drip tray. It does another function as well, which if we put this into the barbecue and we just rest it 
front and back, or sorry, left and right, we just rest that there, what happens is the initial baffle knocks the heat left and right. This one knocks the heat front and back. Yeah, so so we have an even airflow around the chamber. So next thing we do is put this grill in and the, uh, the, the foil line tray underneath the, underneath the grill also slopes down to your end. So as you're roasting the bigger pieces of meat, I know I've done some pork shoulders on here and I know you have as well, they yeah. come out really well. Um, all that excess fat will just drain off there's a little channel down here which just comes out through the pipe at the bottom and ends up in this little fat collector and you've got your little fat collector down there so the only thing left to do now is close the lid that will that will um start to build up the temperature inside the barbecue one From thing we haven't talked about is obviously we mentioned there about doing boston butts shoulders of pork yeah obviously one thing you can do with these barbecues it's one of those barbecues you can put it in set a temperature <clears throat> and you can walk away from it from a period of time yeah, you don't yeah. have to stand there all the time manning it yeah um, one thing these barbecues do come with they come with two food probes which they're on your side they are on my side they're these two wires that you may have seen before when we uh, when we talked about the control panel so two little probe um, plugins on the control panel two little probes these are like other probes you can get on the market for your um, aftermarket stuff but these come as standard and there's a little rubberized grommet just on the left hand side of the chamber of the cook box. These just come through and if we had two pieces of meat on here you just pop those straight into the meat um, and then once you've got those in if we just take a look back down here at the control panel little silver button probe selector we press that it comes up as P1 for probe 1 and then within a couple of seconds it tells us that that probe is currently reading 36 degrees C. If we press that probe uh, selector twice we get P2 and there's a difference, one of these probes is just silver and one of them has got little black marks on it. Um, and that tells us that probe 2 is at 43, 44 degrees C. So you don't have to lift the lid. Exactly. So the old adage that if you're looking, you ain't cooking. You don't need to look in order to know what's going on inside your barbecue. You talk about how easy these are to use. I did a, I did a conference a few weeks ago, um, industry conference, and I did two pork butts. I put them on at midnight because I was presenting at 12 o'clock the next day. I put them on at midnight, put the two meat probes in, went to bed. Got up at four in the morning, came back, wrapped them in foil, put the probes back in, went back to bed, came out the next morning at eight o'clock, had a quick check on what was going on. Everything was fine inside, didn't even lift the lid until about 11 o'clock the next day when, when, it was, when they were cooked. Um, it was just time to t take them off and let them rest. But really, really simple bits of kit. Um, there's only there's two models available in the UK. There's two model, main models available in two different sizes in the UK. There's a few quirky models above the range. So this is a, a Pro 22. This is a Pro 22. There's the Pro the 34 range, which is the bigger barbecue, and then there's the Century range, similar sort of barbecue, but it has a, a warming box underneath. The Century range has the warming box underneath, which is just an enclosed area underneath the actual chamber. Um, has a little temperature down the front. So if you want to take your foods off, um, if you're cooking foods in stages and you want to take them off and just keep them warm you can pop them down in there. The other thing that the Century range has is it has a larger hopper. Yeah. So I think you can get a full 20 pound bag of uh, pellets in there in one go, whereas the, on, the, um, on the Pro Series, it's about half or three quarters yeah. of a bag. So it just allows you to do those longer cooks without having to think about coming back and, and refilling. But um, great bits kit, and we're gonna do a few more videos today yeah. on, on what you can do on these, what you can cook on them. So, so join us in our next video, and we got, what we're gonna do, we're gonna show you just the capacity of one of these barbecues and what you can cook and how much you can cook. Um, we stop the full range here at the barbecue shop at Hayes Garden World. Um, for other tips, hints and things, visit our blog via our website, hayesgardenworld.co.uk. We're across all the social media platforms, Instagram, Twitter. Um, if you want any more hints and tips, visit our staff in store and they'll be more than happy to run through these barbecues and show you how they work.